the secret heart of things. It was an essential part of daily life which received heartening, heartbreaking news and those with hearts of gold or hearts of stone in its vigilance were ignored or praised, sometimes flanked by JFK and John the Twenty-Third, or accompanied by the household's heart-rending allegiance to a particular Irish revolutionary. Yall was the place of my birth. Uh, three of us were born there my sister Miriam and my brother Mark and myself. I think I was about six or seven when we all moved back to Limerick. Then uh, we moved to Rathband, there was a new house that had been put up there and we moved into one of those in 128 and that has become um, a very strong element in my poetry, that area along with Janesborough. Because all around us were fields, wheat fields, pea fields, and we played along, uh, around all those fields, you know. We had streams to jump and, and trenches and so on, and we had quite a, a, a fantastic childhood growing up in those fields and countryside and so on. So Rathband does figure a, a lot in the poems. My parents had a, a profound effect on me. I think parents in general have profound effects on uh, their, their children. But in my case, um, my mother was, uh, Quite, uh, they were quite artistic, both of them. My father was a musician. He loved uh, playing the piano. He actually had his own little group. And they used to play around and they had a group and they used to play and go and play in Hanratties and play in um, various functions around, around Limerick, County Limerick. And my, my father actually uh, used to play the piano in Dirty Nellies at one stage. And I used to go with him on these trips. And I think that aspect of uh, effect or, or influence had had an effect on me, you know, that musical side. And my mother also encouraged me to read. I, I joined the library at a very young age, like seven or eight, when I came to Limerick. And I've never stopped reading. I think I got a great love for books from my mother. I think it was very lucky actually in Limerick at that time because you had um, great characters and great cultural people that were trying to push the uh, poetry side and writing side in Limerick, which was kind of more or less, um, well, it hadn't vanished, but it wasn't uh, up there with, with, with uh, in the popularity stakes, so to speak. And Limerick was always uh, associated with writers down through the years. So you had people like um, uh, Claude and Darian, uh, Dorian um, Burns. You had uh, Kitty Breeden. Uh, you had a a great uh, character called Seamus Canada and they were they were of a great interest to John because they had the the history of Limerick but they also then each their own way they had the, the cultural identity of the city and he was very influenced by by these people. I started writing around 16 through the influence of two very good teachers Eric Lynch and Jackie Noonan and I think it was Eric who really got me thinking about the countryside and the countryside on my doorstep. And it was Jackie who kind of, Jackie Noonan, who, who got me to think about organisation in the poem and the more um, metrical side of the poem. But I was dabbling, um, as Paddy Kavanagh would say, and then it became more and more, I think I became more and more serious about that. But. The, the actual first book I produced, I, was, I think I was 20, and it was published by Nora McNamara because that was another thing I did. I studied um, with Nora in the High School of Commerce, as it was then, then known, and I learned how to type, and I learned some shorthand. And she found me scribbling at the end of the class, and it was um, the result of that was that she published uh, Boundaries. At least she paid for it, and the Limerick Leader printed it. And those were the early, early poems that I was working on. And a lot of those poems were about the fields and life and the countryside and my coming to terms with the surroundings and the area and so on. Then I, re I recall really the first sort of breakthrough poem would have been Rainbow Road, which won a prize in the list, it won the Listall Poetry Competition. And I suppose that was um, the first true, real poem that uh, I wrote. John and myself went to Sexton Street School and we were taught by Eric Lynch 
and we studied T.S. Eliot, William Butler Yeats, Patrick Kavner, people who vented self-expression and I think back then around that time when we were at school, uh, the late 60s, early 70s, there was a lot of self-expression starting to come out and I think that's what we were interested in. The local poetry scene in Limerick was quite active, it was quite a positive vibe or buzz going on because you had people like Kitty Breeden, Seamus of Canada, Darina and Claude Byrne and Willie English and of course Desmond O'Grady was, was hovering over, over them all. Um, so yeah, the scene in Limerick, uh, I thought it was a fairly lively scene which led Jim Burke and myself to start the Stony Thursday book. Now, we started that because I think the Castle Poets book um, tended to kind of disappear there in, in, for a number of years and, and we filled a gap with the Stony Thursday. So in actual fact, in 1974-75, we, I think the first edition of the Stony the first issue of the Stony Thursday was published. We decided that we'd do this magazine, he, he, he kind of came up with the name the Stony Thursday book. Now I must say I like the title for different reasons. Uh, Bob Dylan had a song called Everybody Must Get Stoned and I could see that kind of side to the title and we both agreed on the title even though John's cousin James Liddy often referred to it as more of a Maundy Thursday book. Uh, I, I, I think we felt Limerick needed a voice and it needed a presence. Uh, in some form of way to address culture and that's what we thought that the Stony Thursday book would do. That instead of, 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 of people throwing stones, the way John saw it was that look here they'd be thrown out expressions and ideas and it could be good for Limerick. My first recollection of the Stony Thursday book as an idea and as a concept came when I was doing a reading in Limerick yet again with Desmond O'Grady. And John said he was going to follow up the broadsheet, which had finished the year before in 1978, with this magazine called Stony Thursday Book. He asked me to contribute, and I specifically wrote a poem about my maternal grandmother, Bridget Kelly, who was living in the Roxborough Road at that time. This seemed to fit in and it was to be a continual sort of relationship between Stony Thursday and myself when I travelled abroad. I would return to a Limerick theme for the magazine itself. He had people like, like Matt Whelan and, and Kieran Bevel, who was very, very, very active in it. Uh, Sean Burke, uh, the famous Sean Burke, who, who was partly responsible for for uh, getting George Blake out of Wormwood Scrubs prison, just to refer to it as the Stony Broke book. My only connection with the uh, Stony Thursday book was, in a way, to do the odd illustration for it. Like, I think one of the earliest ones was probably Kate O'Brien. I had a job there in the Limerick People. Um, which is quite a good newspaper, and they gave me the job of, of doing the arts pages in that paper. And we did some very good work on that, I felt, and there was some, you know, some good work produced during the time it lasted. We did a very good um, spread on the market uh, fairly earlier on, I think it was around 1980, 81. Um, and Jerry Andrews was the photographer on that uh, project. And I think though it's, it's, it's a lovely, um, collection of photos, early photos of the, of the market. It has been said that John, as a poet, lives with two influences, okay? The Irish and the Limerick influence and the Spanish um, influence very much. And he intertwines those um, together. And that, that's what makes him such an interesting poet. And I think you could count on one hand the number of Irish writers and poets who are European, you know, really European.
Patrick Kavanagh did say that once he's, he wrote once, to be uh, an exile is to be a coward. Um, and that, those were the initial feelings I had when I first went to Spain. Maybe I'm just leaving, abandoning everything. And I'm leaving my friends, my family, my place, my sense of place and so on. I went to Spain and I was dealing with these initial exile feelings that many an Irish person has had. Exile is a strong part of our culture. Um, but I don't actually see myself now as being in exile. But I am aware of what it means to be living outside on a daily basis uh, outside of Ireland. It was a day like today, on the 12th, that I arrived in Madrid and I came up the Calle Valencia onto the Plaza La Pies and my first impressions were of a fiesta, feast, uh, carnival atmosphere and uh, I then lived in La Pies and I've never stopped coming back because today is the 12th of October and, and because I married to uh, a woman called Pilar, I decided I'd read this, a letter to Pilar. And there's a little quote from Van Morrison. Have I told you lately how much I love you? This letter I never wrote but should have. So now is the right moment to pen the patient page with a few words of homage. The day you walked into the core of my being, I knew then why I had come to your Spain, but worried about losing my Irish vocation. The question of whether one views oneself as a limerick uh, Irish or Spanish poet. My, uh, my honest answer there would be I view myself as a poet uh, first and foremost. What people want to classify me as is up to them really. I think the Spanish would always view me as an Irish poet. They wouldn't quite classify me as a Limerick poet or a Cork poet so it would be broader and a wider sphere over there and I certainly don't think I'm a Spanish poet. So maybe it's the other, between the other two that I would have to come back to. But definitely I would think there is a strong case for um, calling me an Irish poet, first and foremost, and where I come from, um, secondly, and where I live, probably thirdly. Uh, it's always a pleasure to read with John, my brother. John's work is, is essentially and still very much rooted in Ireland. Um, a lot of his poetry is um, revolves around uh, issues in Ireland which are, are, are contemporary issues and also people in Ireland who whom he has met or who, who, whom he associates with in Ireland. So I would have to say that um, despite the number of years that he's been outside of Ireland, uh, I think Personally, I think he's, he's still very much an Irish poet um, and in fact, I mean, with, without the, the pejorative, perhaps, um, connotation that the word might, might, might have, quite a local poet in the sense that um, his poetry is infused with, with a lot of detail, local detail, uh, he's got a very keen eye for um, uh, issues, local issues in Ireland, um, and as Kavanagh has said, you know, um, um, the local, the more the more local of the, the poem is, the more universal it can be. Madrid, through the eyes of a stranger, for Ita Fitzgibbon. Crossing the French border by bus was like passing through a doorway into a warm barn. Finally, wearily, happily in Spain 
among the bar crowds and the tapas, the third man music from the slot machine. Then south into a centre of bulls and late summer lust, football festivals, moose and park balls, fountains frozen in a winter frost, where the sea is in a glass of gin, the bonnevs wear bowler hats, English spoken near shops that sell caramelos, paco and the largest corsets. This city of newly arrived unloved, with eyes like eager sailors, missing the beat but finding it among the bodega silence of Goya's old failures. I think John's poetry is very important for Limerick. In fact, I tend to see them just as much as history books as poetry books. He has kept the memory of so much of Limerick alive, both its people and places. The creation of the Stony Thursday, I know that encouraged people. And I know that whenever John comes back and, uh, and, and reads in Limerick, that there is a, a big turnout, people that are looking forward to hearing him, to seeing what he's doing next. And, uh, and uh, I just as, I assume that he's been influential on them, that he's, if anything, he has certainly been an example of dedication to poetry. Because John started organizing his own uh, venues for readings there, and he brought the, the world of people that I'll have never met in, because John was traveled where I was stuck here in Limerick. John was traveled. He brought down the Dublin ports and various ports to Limerick. When I'm in Ireland and I'm, you know, I begin to hanker back, I begin to hanker for things in Spain, like um, going around, you know, getting up, walking out my door there and just going in for a caña and a tapa and very simple, basic things is what I, I'd miss about Spain. So I actually like getting back to Spain from Ireland and I love coming to Ireland from Spain. So I'm, I'm sort of a, a bit of um, an enigma there maybe, I don't know. But it's all quite simple things that I miss. It's nothing extraordinary. On the Spanish side, I, I've read fairly extensively through Spanish literature all the way up to contemporary, um, as I said. And uh, Jose Maria Alvarez would be a poet I would admire a lot, writing away today still. Uh, Clara Janes, Beatriz Villa Canas is a good poet also. And she's very good with us, with Liam and myself in Spain. We get together in the Well Festival and that. So yeah, there are a lot, a lot of influences there. We're delighted to have John and Liam Liddy and Beatrice via Cañes from Spain here with us. They run the Well Poetry Festival in Spain, in Madrid for the last 10 years. And as part of the gathering 2013, they decided to bring it to Limerick. So, um, a warm welcome for them. Thank you. Applause for Beatrice. Thank you, John. My relations with Ireland are profound and uh, very long. My subject matter is broader since going to Spain. Um, I've got this more European. Um, interest coming through. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I have changed. I've changed over the years, without a doubt, you know, and I think that's a good thing. Yet mystery craves to be solved, and doubt refuses to be stopped in its track. While there are illogical occurrences, daily miracles, even the need to atone, the curious brain alone persists and will not be derailed from its search to bypass the heart and get to the soul. Thank you very much. 